Hey guys, my name's Aaron and welcome to the channel. On today's lesson, I'm going to take you through magnetic inclination, sometimes referred to as compass dip. I'm going to tell you what it is and how you can combat the effects of it when using your magnetic compass. So do stick around. Right, okay, a picture paints a thousand words and all that. Um, I do apologise, I'm not very good at drawing, but I'm going to try and explain to you what magnetic inclination is. Um, it's often referred to as compass dip because that's the effect that it physically has on the compass in our hand. Uh, knowing the effects of compass dip, we can then combat it uh, with, with various tactics. Okay, so what is magnetic inclination? This here is planet Earth, with all your land masses, and your, all your islands. Okay, so you get the idea, that's planet Earth. Inside the center of planet Earth, you've got this hot molten iron ore core. Basically what this produces is a magnetic field around the planet. So that's the big old magnet. Okay, I really do apologise for the bad drawings. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the compass dip. If you're at the magnetic north pole, your compass needle would want to pull straight down 90 degrees through the ground towards the magnetic north, if your compass was up here. If you were down in the south, it would have the opposite effect. So the southern point would want to be pulled down into the ground with the northern needle pointing up. If you're at the equator, you've got a nice equal balance. So if we imagine this is your compass needle, okay, you've got an equal push and pull on either side. So that would be equally balanced and it can spin freely 360 degrees. Whereas at the north and at the south, it's not going to spin freely inside the compass housing. If you're somewhere in the middle, say up in England, it's kind of going to do an almost 45 degree angle. Okay, so that's north. You're going to have more of a push than you will have a pull on the other side. So if this is your compass needle in England, and it's pushing down like so, this is not gonna spin freely inside your compass housing. So we need to compensate for that. And the way manufacturers do this is they literally put a weight on the back of the compass needle. What happens then is you're gonna have something like this. You're still gonna have the magnetic field wanting to pull down on that end, but because it's been calibrated and it's been weighted correctly, it balances itself out. So now the compass needle can spin freely within the compass housing. Now, depending on where you go in the planet, you're going to need a compass that is calibrated for that particular point. So what has happened is the planet has been divided up into sections. Quite literally, five different sections across the planet. And each of these sections has been given a series of letters to denote what compass you need. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. So let's talk more about those five different regions. On your screen now is a picture that gives a more accurate representation of where these five regions correspond on the planet. You can see the individual letters that have been given to each region. What I have here is a normal bog standard base plate magnetic compass made by a company called Silver. I'm sure you've all heard of them. Okay, they're used worldwide. Now on the back of the compass, if we were to flip it over, on the back of the, uh, the compass housing, you'll find 
some letters. Now on this one in particular, it says MN, Magnetic North. So it's starting to make a bit more sense now. I live in England, this is where I bought this compass. So this compass has been weighted for the magnetic northern part of the planet. So this compass is correct in the location of where I am on the planet. If it was to say MS for magnetic south, and I was up here in England, the weighting of the compass needle is going to be incorrect and it's not going to be able to spin freely inside the compass housing. If you do find yourself in a situation where compass dip is having an effect on your compass, there is one more thing that we can do. Because the compass needle wants to be pulled down or up inside the compass housing, what we can do, if the effects are not too great, we can literally tilt the compass ourselves, just so that it can spin freely inside the compass housing. Now, if the effects are too much like so, then I guess it will work, but it's not gonna be great. So if it's just ever so slightly, okay, you can get away with it like that. But I definitely recommend making sure that you have the right compass for the right region on the planet that you're traveling to. Okay, so that's it for the video. Nice, short and sharp. Um, I hope you learned something. Like I said, I do apologize. I'm not a great artist, but I hope you understand the effects of magnetic inclination. Depending on where you are on the planet, okay, in relation to the magnetic field, will have a push or a pull effect on the compass needle. And all that means is that if it is being pulled down, it's just not going to be able to spin freely inside the compass housing. These are designed to be used flat. So if you've got any comments on this video, do leave them below. Any questions, then please do feel free to message me. I'm going to have a load more videos coming out very soon, so do bear with me. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Anyway, guys, take care. If you like the video, you know what to do. Thumbs up and all that. And I'll speak to you soon. Take care.